Good morning! Day two on the Slocan Valley Rail Trail. So excited to be up and at it. It's a gorgeous day. I've recovered from yesterday. And yeah, let's see what beauty lies ahead of us. Okay, we saw this yesterday, but this is another Japanese internment camp. All that field there. Oh, so sad. You can just imagine them all. War is a, such a horrible thing. This really is such lovely area. You got the farmlands and the mountains. I love the fields and meadows. But let me tell you something. There is zero cell service around here. This whole valley, there's nothing. Just in the town of Slocan. But yeah, for a long ways. Anyway, can you just imagine the train rumbling down this track many years ago? I broke down and sprayed some off on me this morning because yesterday was so horrendous. I used some natural bug spray yesterday, but that just doesn't cut it. I was just plagued with mosquitoes. So hopefully this off does a better job. I hate spraying chemicals on me. But sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do for the sake of a hike and a movie. In our last hike, we learned the distinction and difference between clean and unclean foods. Today, we'll learn about clean and unclean people. The first instance is with childbirth. If the mom bore a male child, she would be considered unclean for 40 days. And on the eighth day, the male infant would be circumcised. If she bore a female child, she would be considered unclean for 80 days, so twice as long as the male child. Some people may question why the difference, but I think that God is particularly tender towards females. Now, these are only my thoughts, but let's talk this through. Now there's a healthy looking crop of stinging nettles. Healthy, but prickly, stingy. Just brilliantly so special. When someone is unclean, they must be isolated from everyone else. So in this case, the mother does not have to go out. She gets some much needed rest and the good Lord gave her double the amount of time to spend with and bond with her baby girl. I think God is so good. Everyone always wanted a male child, but this is the reward you get if you had a female child. When the time was up, she would bring a lamb or turtle doves or pigeons, depending on how wealthy she is, and the priest would make atonement for her, and then she would be pronounced clean. Now we're getting into a river situation. The Slocan River instead of the Slocan Lake. I don't know if you can hear it, but there actually is a train going right now. I just can't get enough of this river. Oh, it's just so gorgeous. I would love to go tubing down the river. The next section deals with all kinds of skin diseases, which goes under the general name of leprosy back then because sometimes you got better from the skin disease and were then reinstated back into the company of others. But in true leprosy, you did not get better, unless Jesus performed a miracle, of course. 
oh, here's some proof that this was a railway bed at one time. I'm not pulling your leg. Now, buttercups are pretty special, but they can be kind of noxious as well. But along this path, I don't mind them. So anyone with leprosy was sent into quarantine until they got better. So you see, all down through the ages, people have had to be in quarantine, and we are no exception. We may have not liked it, but it was God's way of controlling the spread of disease. It was particularly tough for the leper because they had to ever call out, unclean, unclean. So there was humiliation involved as well. Leprosy was a metaphor for sin. One who had been placed outside of the camp on suspicion of leprosy could call for a priest if there was the slightest indication that he was improving. It was the duty of the priest to go when he was called, but we can presume that he did so at times with reluctance. Feeling sure there had been no improvement, he would be tempted to become impatient and reluctant to respond. He needed patience so as never to lose the feeling of compassion the leper so much needed. He must learn not to shun the leper, but to pity and help him. This is a lesson for us today. Like the priest of old, we must have compassion for those among us if we want to be called servants of God. Don't know if you can read that, but we're coming up to the Perry Siding Trailhead. So I went from Lemon Creek to Perry Siding. Oh, there's a bus stop at Perry's. But nobody's parked here. Nobody wants to do the trail today. Oh, that's so, such a pretty scene. Wow. Oh no, coming into tall grass and shade. Oh, I have 36 kilometers left. Sweet. Leprosy was not specifically painful, but the horror and dread of it must have vitally affected the whole life of the sufferer. In like manner, sin may not be felt so keenly, and a man may hardly be conscious of its malignant nature. That power pole has stories to tell. Appledale. What a sweet little community. Leprosy is corrosive and penetrated almost unfelt and unseen until it blossomed into ulcers and raw flesh and wasted away parts of the body. So sin also eats out all spiritual life and beauty, even though outwardly there is no striking evidence of the condition within. Finally, the disease broke forth externally, and man became a living skeleton, a mass of loathsome corruption. So sin at last comes to fruition, until the image of God in man is practically obliterated. It would seem, therefore, that leprosy is a disease especially adapted to typify sin in its various features, as no other malady could. As leprosy ended in death, so sin ends in death.
eagle wasn't that special, an osprey in its nest. The clouds are building up and there is a forecast for rain this afternoon. I guess that's why I am feeling so muggy. But the clouds are so special. The next section has to do with unclean dwellings and even clothes where there may be mold or fungus. In the cleansing of the unclean person or objects, the priest had the person bring two living and clean birds, cedar wood, scarlet, and hyssop. One of the birds had to be killed over running water, and then the other bird and all the other objects were dipped in its blood. This is all symbolic of cleansing. Cedar wood is sweet smelling and reddish. Scarlet is the color of blood, which was used as we have learned in the past for ritual purification. And hyssop is a plant that was used to apply the blood to the objects. David referred to purging with hyssop as a symbol of moral cleansing. The running water literally meant living water, which was appropriate for a ritual intended to remove association with death. The living bird was let loose to carry the impurity away. Oh, now this is decent walking. Certainly helps the mosquito situation. In requiring different stages of purification, God showed how far he brought a person back to harmony with his holiness. Lastly, any bodily discharges made a person unclean. And I'll leave that up to your imagination, what that might include. So pastoral. Okay, okay, I'll kind of explain it to you. With sexual relations, male and female impurity comes together. This does not mean that sex is bad or dirty. But since the fall into sin, human reproduction creates new life, which eventually dies. These regulations indicate God's interest in personal health and sanitation, and at the same time served to emphasize the sacredness of holy things. Ceremonial defilement was symbolic of moral defilement. Oh, somebody did a really good job. God hates sin. He has seen its beginning and its outworking, and he knows what it is. He also hates uncleanness of all kinds, even though it may not be specifically called sin. Wow, that looks like a park over there. Special. God does make a difference between sin and uncleanness and does not change a moral delinquency for that which is merely unclean. But neither does God fail to make men know that uncleanness of all kinds is displeasing to him. This lesson should not be lost on us. God requires holiness. He requires cleanliness. He requires modesty and humility. He requires that we do not benumb our sensibilities by anything whatsoever that tends to make us less aware of his voice. So I made it to the wind loss station from this morning and that was 12 kilometers. Well, I had a nice lunch break with my mom and now I'm raring to go. This afternoon I'm going to be walking 10K. So it's going to be a nice long day. Getting lots accomplished. Oh, this clump of birch is so pretty. Oh, and this is a lovely corridor. Oh, 
Oh, this sign was trying to hide, but I found him. Okay, just one more thought. After cleansing with water, sacrifices involving blood completed the purification. The main elements of purification in the Israelite system were water and blood, symbolizing the future purification through Jesus, who came by water and blood. His ministry began with the baptism in water and ended with the shedding of his blood. After Jesus had died and he was still on the cross and a soldier pierced his side, water and blood came out. Isn't that incredible? Even his first miracle points to these elements. He made water in vessels for ritual purification turn into wine, which could represent blood. I have a Robin friend walking with me. Oh yeah, 24 left. You, well, this is a little bit reminiscent of the Florida Trail. Oh, I miss the Florida Trail, honestly. So as you can see, it may sound bizarre to us, but everything in the Old Testament was always pointing to Jesus and what he as the Messiah would be doing for us. I don't know that I've ever seen a birch tree with a burl before. Have you? Oh, that's a pretty picture. 22 left. I hope I'm nearing my destination because I hear rumblings up there. It's gonna rain any minute, I think. So I didn't see one single solitary person on this trail, this section from Winlaw to Passmore. So either I'm the only crazy one that comes out in the heat of the day, or it's um, not a very nice trail. I love benches, but you just can't sit because of the mosquitoes. Oh. When King David says, create in me a clean heart, O God, I hope that takes on new meaning for you. Won't you also invite God to make you clean? See, it's a thundering over there. 